Oh, wow, I... I have a lot of laptops. Hello again, YouTube land. Jay once again with another video. And, you know, recently somebody told me that they think I have a laptop addiction. I mean, can you believe that? Wow, I can't believe they would say that. So I figured I'd just grab all the laptops that I have lying around and just kind of see how many I do have here. So let's see what I have. So first of all, I have the System76 Oryx Pro. This is, I believe, the first version of that laptop right here. Pretty decent machine, good gaming machine. I have an old MacBook. Eh, I guess it's okay. Maybe I could throw an old distro on this one. I have another old MacBook. A uh, MacBook with a protective cover on it. Okay, fine. Let's see, a Dell XPS 15. This is a decent machine. You know, it runs Linux pretty well. I have a Latitude E6520. And also I have a System76 Lemur. You've probably seen this on quite a few of my videos actually, because it's great to test distributions on this thing for doing reviews and things like that. So solid machine for sure. And you know what? These aren't even the machines I use on a daily basis. So what else do I have here? I have the ThinkPad T480S. Very lightweight, awesome machine, pretty cool. I have the ThinkPad X1 Extreme. This is the first edition that they came out with. And you know, this is also a good gaming laptop. I like this one as well. And then I have what is possibly my favorite laptop of all, the System76 Galago Pro right here. That's pretty cool. Love this machine. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah, I guess when you put them all in one place, I guess I might have an addiction. So. I think I better slow down on checking out new laptops for a while. Oh, by the way, I have the System76 Galago Pro 2019 edition sent to me by System76. This is the Core Boot edition, and we're gonna check it out in this video. And you know, eh, so what? I'll just keep checking out laptops. And this time around, we're gonna check out this Galago Pro right now. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. And here it is in all of its glory. This laptop is every bit as beautiful as mine. I love the Galago Pro. It has a very sturdy aluminum finish, strong hinges, and overall a very premium look and feel. So first of all, I wanna give you guys some general opinions about this machine. Now, first of all, as far as how heavy it is, it's pretty light actually. It's one of the lighter laptops that I've used but it's not feather light either. It's about, I say, slightly lighter than my T480S by Lenovo by, by just a, maybe 10 or 15%. So it feels really good and very portable, but it doesn't feel flimsy. There's just no flex anywhere. Like I could just press into the palm rest. I know you can't see this, but um, you know, it's not flexing. I mean, overall, I mean, I could just, just I'm not going to try too hard to bend it, but it's basically a pretty solid build quality. And when it comes to the hinges, you know, if I just start randomly shaking it, um, you know, it's not actually moving. Let me go ahead and move the lid up a little bit. You can see it is kind of wiggling down, but when I have it all the way back, that's how you tell the hinges are good because it's not wobbling, but I have to kind of put a little bit of effort into it to make it actually wobble. So. Overall, the build quality is really good. It's thin, but it's not too thin. The keyboard is really nice. I love the keyboard. And, you know, it's one of my favorite keyboards, actually. I would say it's not quite as good as a Lenovo keyboard. Sometimes I actually do prefer this keyboard, though. But overall, I do like this keyboard a lot. It's held up to a lot of abuse. Like I mentioned, I'm a writer. I can really punish a keyboard. And this one has held up. Actually, this is not mine, but mine has the same keyboard as this guy does. And it's held up pretty well. The key travel isn't the deepest that I've used, but it is decent. As with most laptops nowadays, this machine does have a backlit keyboard. So if you benefit from that while typing in the dark, well, here you go. 
Now the screen, the screen is, uh, you know, it's actually really good. I think that it's one of the brighter displays that I've used. If I had to compare this screen to my T480S, it's way better. The Lenovo T480S is a great laptop actually, one of my favorites, and um, you know, the screen is the weak point on that laptop. It's, you know, very, very dim. This one here, I mean, it's very bright. Not the absolute brightest that I've ever used, but it's exactly what I'm looking for. It's just as bright as it needs to be. And I think that's actually pretty cool. So the screen is awesome. And then when it comes to the trackpad, um, I would rate it probably a seven out of 10. It's not the worst trackpad that I've ever used. It's one of the better ones. But um, one of the other System76 laptops, I think it was the Darter Pro, if I'm not mistaken, has what I feel is the best trackpad of any laptop I've ever used. So this laptop isn't quite at that level when it comes to the uh, trackpad, but it's good enough. It's a little bit on the small side, as you can see from my fingers right here. Um, I usually like my trackpads to be a little big, but that's fine. I mean, it gets the job done. My fingers do feel you know, like I, they slide over it very well. There's a little bit of friction. It's not quite as slippery as other System76 laptops, but it's not going to feel weird, and I think that you'll actually probably like it. I definitely like it as well. Now, when it comes to ports, on the right-hand side of the laptop, we have a USB-C port with Thunderbolt, a standard USB 3.1 port. For connecting an external display, we have both a mini display port and HDMI, an SD card slot, and then we have um, a hardware ethernet jack. Now that's an actual important thing for a lot of people. Some companies would try to lead you to believe that nobody cares about ethernet jacks anymore. Totally not true. Part of my job is configuring switches and routers and let me tell you, it's orders of magnitude easier to do that on an ethernet jack than it is trying to get a USB serial connection going. And you guys that do this know what I'm talking about and will probably also appreciate the fact that there's an ethernet jack on this laptop. On the left hand side, we have the power button, which you have to hold for about a half a second to turn it on. I think it's pretty neat that it's on the side. Basically, it keeps it out of sight. Also on the left side, we have a standard USB 3.1 port. We have the microphone port. We have the headphone jack. I like the fact that those are separate. I've had some issues on Linux in the past when we had combo jacks. I don't quite know what the issue is. I've never run into that issue on System76 laptops because every one that I've ever tried, they're separate. I think that's a good thing. Then on the bottom, you know, still feels pretty sturdy down here. I love the fact that we have these really long rubber feet on the bottom and the top. It just makes it really hard to, to slide around. I mean, I'm putting some decent, you know, I don't know how well you can see this, but I'm putting some decent energy into trying to move or slide this thing. And I can get it to slide a little bit, as you can see here, but you can see that the desk is actually moving a little bit um, when I try to move the laptop. So it's actually great because if I'm just a klutz and let's face it, I am, and I'm just doing my thing and I accidentally slide it, well, it's not gonna go flying off the desk. And when you have a premium laptop like this, you definitely don't want it spilling onto the floor. That would not be a good day for sure. Like most laptops nowadays, the Galago Pro does have a webcam. Pop! OS itself doesn't seem to come with a webcam utility installed by default, so I simply installed Cheese. And I'll go ahead and open that right now so you can get a feel for how good the quality is of the webcam. And as you can see, it's a pretty much a standard webcam. I mean, to be fair, it's not like we're going to be recording movies off of the webcam or anything like that. It's only mainly used for web conferencing, so I do think that it does get the job done. And of course, I guess you guys are curious about Coreboot. After all, that is featured on this laptop. So let's have a discussion about that. Now, first of all, there actually isn't a whole lot to talk about. I'll explain. So I was unable to get actual footage recorded off the HDMI port of the core boot screen because the screen recorder can't activate until after it boots. What you see right now is the boot device selection screen. So if you wanted to boot into a flash drive or something like that, this is the screen you would go to in order to do that. And you get to the screen by pressing escape. And actually, this is pretty much all there is. There are no settings whatsoever. And I'm not really sure how I feel about this because during my career, I've always had a lot of BIOS settings to change. It's just something that I'm used to. 
doesn't really mean I have to change settings, I just like to have a lot of control. Now the whole goal here, according to System76 when I reached out to them, is to basically have sane defaults to minimize the need for anyone to go into the BIOS to change anything. And I'll give you an example of that. Virtualization support is enabled by default, so you know you don't have to worry about that not being enabled. You could definitely run your virtual machines. So I'm basically just going to keep using this and just see how I feel about it. But you know, it's a little strange. It's not like there's anything I'm missing. I can't think of anything I wanted to change that I, I don't have access to. But from my standpoint, it's just something I'm accustomed to having a lot of settings. Now, if there are any settings that you would like exposed that you don't have access to, let System76 know because they are open to suggestion. This is just the first version of their core boot implementation and it'll surely evolve as time goes on and they get feedback from their users. So make sure you let them know what your opinion is. Now, I basically feel like you know, it might be a good thing that we don't have to worry about BIOS settings and the machine boots a lot faster as a result, but uh, you know, maybe your opinion will differ on that. But having Core Boot is great because we have an open source BIOS implementation in this laptop, which is one step closer to being completely blob free, which you know is definitely a great thing. One benefit of Core Boot is that it is supposed to enhance the boot speed. Is it faster? I just pressed the power button and I am not going to edit this part of the video so you can see for yourself. I do think that was pretty fast. All right, so at this point I have the HDMI cable plugged directly into the laptop. So I figured I would show you guys a screen capture coming off the machine directly so I can show you some of the various details about this model. So let's go ahead and switch the camera over to the laptop and we'll check that out. And here we are on the actual machine itself. Now when you first buy this laptop, you'll be shown a little walkthrough of various settings that you can configure. When you first turn it on, you'll be asked whether or not you want to encrypt the drive, and then it'll install the operating system. Then after the OS is installed, you will reboot, and then you'll set up your user account. And then after you do that, you'll be basically where I am right now on the default Pop! OS desktop. This laptop does ship with Pop! OS 19.10, but you can opt for Ubuntu if you prefer standard Ubuntu instead. So one of the things that I love about the implementation of Pop! OS on this laptop is that everything is integrated very well. I'll show you what I mean. So if I bring up settings, and then we go to devices, and then firmware, we can see right from GNOME settings which firmware revision our laptop is actually on. We get the version number right here. As you can see from the date, this version of the firmware was released on Halloween. How awesome is that? I love Halloween. Now I have a laptop with a firmware that actually was created on Halloween. That's pretty sweet. I wonder if they were wearing costumes while they were in the process of publishing this firmware version. If I expand right here, we can see some basic details about this firmware. There's nothing to show right now because we're still on the original firmware for this model. But if there was a new version of the firmware available, you would be able to download it and get that installed right from here. Now, in addition to that, if I go over here to details, we can see some details specific to this machine right here. We have 64 gigs of RAM, an Intel Core i7-1051OU CPU, Intel UHD Graphics Comet Lake, as you see right here. This version of Pop! OS has GNOME 3.34.1. And of course, it's a 64-bit OS. That's basically all you can get nowadays anyway with uh, the Ubuntu base. And then I have a 250 gigabyte SSD, which may seem a little small considering I have an i7 and 64 gigs of RAM, but this is a review unit. I'm not planning on putting my movie collection on here, so a 250 gig SSD is perfectly fine. Now earlier I mentioned integration. Now right here we have OS upgrade, so I can upgrade the operating system right from here. Now 1910 is the latest version as of the time I'm recording this video, so there's nothing new to upgrade to just yet. 
But if there was a new release of the OS, of Pop! OS, I would be able to click a button somewhere in this area here, and that would allow me to go ahead and upgrade to the latest version. That's pretty cool. Speaking of cool, we have Pop Shop, which is part of Pop! OS. And right here, you see this little circle that's spinning. It's basically checking for updates. Now, there aren't any updates to install because, you know, everything is currently up to date. But here on the Installed tab, it shows all the current apps that I currently have installed here. And if I had updates, we would actually get the option of updating individual applications or we could update the entire operating system straight from here. Now, of course, I didn't even mention the whole purpose for Pop Shop in the first place, which is to install new applications. And here we could basically install apps really easily without even needing the command line. So for example, if I wanted to install Steam, I simply click on it, click install, put in my super secret password, and you can see it's downloading. So that was pretty easy. We were able to install Steam without even opening the command line. Now, as you know, I have no problem with the command line. I mean, I do command line tutorials after all, but Pop! OS is a very user-friendly distribution. If you're a beginner, you'll have all the tools you need to install applications or do whatever you need to do to get your work done quickly and easily. And if you are an advanced user like I am, you just simply open up the terminal and do whatever you want to do. But as you just saw, installing Steam was pretty easy, and Pop Shop is a great thing to have to make installing applications a cinch. Now that Steam is installed on our machine, I simply go to Activities, I can go to my Apps, and we can see that it is shown right here. So if I click on that, of course it has to do the famous update, which of course takes a few minutes. So there you go, Steam is working just fine. I had to fast forward through that really long installation process. I mean, no matter what kind of machine you have, Steam takes a very long time to get ready. And I didn't want to wait through that. I have a really hard time waiting through progress bars. And that's actually the reason why I have a Super Nintendo in the studio. So I have something to do while I'm waiting. No, I'm not kidding. I actually have a Super Nintendo in the studio. But anyway, you can see that Steam has installed. Pop Shop is awesome. It makes it very easy, like I said, to get your favorite apps installed on your machine. Now, enough about Steam. Let's get geeky. Go ahead and close all this here. And I'll bring up a terminal. So I'm going to show you the output of LSPCI for those of you that are curious what kind of hardware components are actually in this machine. And here we have a list. Go ahead and pause the screen if you are curious and need to research any of these components. And I'm not going to read all of this to you, but you can see things like the Ethernet controller, for example. We have the Realtek card right here. This is the model number. We can see that it is a gigabit Ethernet card. We have Thunderbolt 3 here on this machine. You can see the Intel network card that is here, and so on. And to give you more information about the CPU, I'll just do this. Scroll up a bit here. And of course, we can see that it is an i7-1051OU CPU. It has a base clock speed of 1.8 gigahertz. That turbo boosts up to 4.9 gigahertz, if I remember correctly. It has four cores, and with hyper-threading, it actually shows up as eight different threads. And so far, I have to say, I really think this is a very fast CPU. I am a little bit jealous because my Galago Pro, like I mentioned, only has an i5, and that was a previous generation. To see some of that in action, I can just bring up HTOP. And we can see the four cores here. They show up as eight because of hyperthreading, like I mentioned. And you know, I, I'm not running a whole lot right now. Well, actually I kind of am more on that in a minute, but you know, I just basically wanted to show what everything looks like generally when we are more on the idling side of things. I'm only using 12 gigs of RAM out of 64. Um, these are estimates, that's, that's not exact. I actually have a virtual machine running, which is why I'm using so much RAM. 
This machine doesn't use 12 gigs of RAM when it's idling, but I do have a virtual machine running in paused state. But, you know, even in paused state, it's going to, of course, use memory. But as we can see, we definitely have some pretty decent specs here. Speaking of virtual machines, here I have a Pop! OS virtual machine. And I just installed this to basically play around. I mean, it's kind of weird to have Pop! OS 1910 running in a VM on top of a Pop! OS 1910 host. But, you know, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun. The uh, virtual machine, as you can see, is paused right now, so I will unpause it. And now we are running Pop! OS inside Pop! OS. So I'll show you what I did. So basically, if I go to settings here, and then I'll go over here to details, I was able to give this VM some serious horsepower. I mean, I gave it 16 gigs of RAM. And I have to say, being able to give a VM 16 gigs of RAM and still have a lot left over for myself, that's pretty darn cool. I could bring up GNOME system monitor here as well. And we can see that I actually gave it four CPU cores along with the 16 gigs of RAM I already mentioned. So this is a pretty good VM. And one of the things that I thought was pretty cool is that you wouldn't be able to tell. I mean, it runs pretty fast. I mean, I am seeing a little bit of a lag here because, you know, let's face it, it is a VM. But all things considered, it's actually very performant. I'm actually surprised that it's running so well in a VM. And you might be thinking, well, duh, of course it's running well. It's an i7 processor, 64 gigs of RAM. You gave it four CPU cores and 16 gigs of RAM. And while that's true, I've always known GNOME to run very, very slow in a VM, regardless of what kind of resources you allocate to it. And in this case, I think GNOME is actually running pretty good. Either way, it's really good to see that GNOME is running so well in a virtual machine. I think that is so cool. And another thing that I find interesting is that I'm not hearing the fan. I am running a Pop! OS virtual machine inside Pop! OS. And yes, I'm not running any crazy tasks, but most of the time on any laptop that I've used, if I have a beefy VM running inside of the host machine, you're going to hear the fan. And on this machine, sometimes you do hear the fan and it can be loud, but it only comes on when there's a reason for it. And right now, I don't hear it at all. And considering that, like I mentioned, I'm running a beefy VM on this thing, um, that's actually pretty impressive. Now, speaking of impressive, I mean, this machine actually runs very fast. Of course, again, it's an i7, so yeah, you'd kind of expect that, but having an i7 and 64 gigs of RAM on a 13-inch laptop, yes, it says 14-inch on their site, and it is because the, you know, the screen is 14 inches, but it's a 13-inch chassis, so you have 64 gigs of RAM on this model and an i7 on a 13-inch computer, that's actually pretty cool. And the performance, like I mentioned, is really good. I could just start opening random applications here and you can see that it doesn't skip a beat. So I could just randomly open up, let's say, I'll open up here LibreOffice Writer. You know, there it goes, it's opening up. And then I'll go ahead and open up a browser and it's opening the browser. And you can see that everything is actually still performing. I'm just opening up a bunch of random applications and the UI isn't slowing down at all. So you can see that it is actually a very performant machine. And that's actually saying quite a bit because again, I have a virtual machine running in the background that's taking up quite a bit of resources while I'm doing other things here. And this machine just isn't skipping a beat. I'll go ahead and close all this. And I'll go ahead and shut this VM down. And here's something that I've neglected to tell you. I've done all of that being on battery saver mode. So if I go up here and then I go down to the battery, you can see that I am on the battery life mode right here, which is actually going to slow the processor down a little bit. So why don't we go ahead and just switch it to high performance mode? Is there any difference in the speed of opening applications? Well, let's find out. I have an empty desktop right now, so click on activities and I'll again just start clicking on random applications. There we 
There's LibreOffice. And I would say that everything is actually even faster than it was a moment ago. Well, that's to be expected. I put it on high performance mode, but I still don't hear the fan. Now I'm sure it's going to kick on in a minute because I am opening up a bunch of things all at once here, to be fair. But, um, you know, it is actually performing very well. And now I am actually hearing the fan a little bit. It's not on very loud. It's staying relatively quiet and I can hear the fan because I'm actually listening out for it. But this machine, like I mentioned, the fan comes on and you will hear it, but it only gets loud when there's a reason for it to get loud. And right now it's actually pretty quiet. It's really awesome that this laptop is able to keep up with my workload. My day-to-day -day life is basically creating virtual machines, running scripts and programs and terminals, doing voice calls, conference calls, things like that, browsing the web, of course, checking email, playing games, those types of things. And this laptop does all of that for me with no problems whatsoever. And it does it way faster than my current Galago. Again, I'm kind of jealous and I kind of want to buy this one. So what's my verdict? What do I think of the brand new 2019 System76 Galago Pro? I love this laptop. I kind of already knew I would because like I mentioned several times, I have the previous model. The chassis is exactly the same. The keyboard's the same, the screen seems the same. I mean, they might be different, but I'm not noticing any difference whatsoever from the external side of things. But from the inside, we have, like I mentioned, a faster CPU. We have Core Boot. This model can support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So that allows you to get a lot of work done. And especially if you are a developer, um, a sysadmin, you're a DevOps person, if you're into any of those engineering type roles, I think you really will appreciate that because you can run can, a bunch of containers on here, some virtual machines to get your work done. I think that you'll actually really enjoy this machine. Now, if you are a more general user, you just want a laptop to surf the web, it's really good for that too. You can spec this out with, like I mentioned, up to 64 gigs of RAM, but if you want to keep the cost down for general usage, you can opt for a you know slower processor and maybe less RAM. Um, as long as you have at least 16 gigs, I mean, I think you're fine. That's all really the average person really needs anyway. But like I mentioned, if you are more on the engineering side of things, you can really build this laptop up to make it even faster. And it's a great machine to get your work done on. I really do love this machine. So I'm going to try very, very hard not to pay System76 to keep this machine because I really, really like it. I really like having 64 gigs of RAM. I really like having an i7, a very fast i7. I like this machine quite a bit, highly recommend it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this packaged up and send this back to System76. So I wanna thank them for giving me the opportunity to review this laptop. You guys are awesome, thank you so much. So if you guys out there are looking for a decent laptop, definitely consider the Galago Pro. It's not going to play like high-end games like Doom or something like that because, you know, it doesn't have a dedicated GPU. But as long as high-end gaming is not your use case, I really think that this machine will do everything else you could possibly want a machine to do very, very efficiently, and you'll be definitely satisfied with that. So what are your thoughts on the System76 Galago Pro? Do you already have one? Uh, if so, what are, what are your opinions of it? Are you thinking about getting one? Let me know in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.